English, Kun. English. Oh yeah, we're live. Yes, it's English again, of course. Welcome everybody who's watching uh, at our first webinar, free webinar of 2023. I, I'm, I'm not sure if we have sound. Okay, we're double checking the sound. We had some issues so starting up. Uh, yeah, I think we, yes, are. we have. Yes, we sound. are good. Perfect. So let's start the first webinar of this year, 2023. Um, so let's start with Happy New Year, everybody. I think we're still allowed to say Happy New Year. Um, we wish you all the best, of course, for the new year, and let's make it a good one. Yes, a successful we Successful one and a creative one. We already have some guests from, uh, from Colombia, from Hi. Barranquilla. Hello, hello, welcome. <laughs> Always happy to see people all over the world are watching live webinars. Uh, it's a lot of fun, of course. Um, today, we have for you um, okay, wait, before we start, as always, questions can be asked in the live chat. Kuhn is behind the buttons and he will uh, tell your questions to me he will, uh, and I will try to answer them. As good as possible. As good as possible. Can't promise anything, of course, <laughs> uh, but you never know. So uh, questions, jokes or whatever, comments can be uh, placed in the live chat. And of course, when this webinar is uh, finished, um, we will upload it also to our YouTube channel and on our Facebook pages, so you can watch it as many times as you want. We have also some Dutch people from Köln. Schönen Tag. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, uh, bonjour. Uh, um, everyone, welcome. Como esta? <laughs> welcome, everyone. Um, let's start. As you probably already know, I will uh, show you this design today. It's a cute little teddy bear especially for Valentine's Day. But of course, uh, you can create, turn it into a, a birthday teddy bear or, what, or for a, um, a bird for a baby occasion. So you can use this design in many, many ways. This is our Valentine's uh, teddy bear uh, with a little rose. I will explain you, give you the sizes. And again, I would love to see your creations. So if you recreate this teddy bear, upload it to social media and don't forget to tag us so we can repost you because we love to see what you create from our webinars. I think we're good to go, Kun. Yes, any questions so far? Wait, 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 I have to turn my camera on, my sound oh. on. Uh, I have a lot of buttons. Eh? You have a lot of buttons, that's true. Yes. Uh, no, everyone is wishing you a happy new year. Likewise. Uh, wishing us a happy new year. Of course, listening to the whole of so Semper next year. also a happy new year to you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you see how lovable we are at the beginning of this year? Oh, we are. We were always lo lovable. Yeah, that's true. So, let's start. I have this teddy bear, uh, this cute little fella, and I will uh, explain it to you step by step. And we're going to try to keep it as close as possible. We're going to start with the base. I chose for this design uh, gold and red because gold always works. And red uh, comes in the rose, so you have matching colors all over. Of course, the teddy bear is in brown. I chose uh, coffee, uh, the color coffee, because I have the widest range of balloons in it, uh, the 360s, 260s, and 12-inch, and we're going to use them all. Um, so that's the main color uh, we use in this design. For the base, I use a cluster of five. The gold one is a 12-inch balloon inflated, around seven and a half inch. Um, if you've watched more webinars that I've done, you know I'm not really about sizing. Um, because you have to do what you think is best. If you like a bigger or a smaller base or a complete different design for a base, feel free to work on this. For this design, um, the first 12 inch gold inflated around 7.5 inch. Then stacked on top of there is a cluster of 5, 5 inch red inflated around 4.5 and, and 5 inch. What I always love to do is push these balloons a little bit so they're more round shaped. This is the base and here we're going to start. At the bottom, what I normally do to weigh it down is use a little water or a little sand weight um, just to fix everything into place. Something you can add extra. Then I will start with the body. It's a 12 inch balloon and there is a um, raisin twist at the bottom so I have two connection points. And 
what I really love because I used the 12 inch balloon it has this more of a pear shaped and I like the shape better for the body instead of a, um, the eclipse that's what they call it right for the link balloon you it's it's the same um, same shape all the way around and with the 12 inch it's wider at the bottom smaller at the top and you have a better shape for the body um, Kun, can you please turn that off? Okay. Um, so I have my raisin twist at the bottom, and this will be my connection point to the base. So I'm going to connect this. Before I do that, I will check the size for you guys, because I know you love to work with sizes. I inflated it around 10 inch. Keep in mind that I push my balloons more round. So first I inflate my balloon, push them nice and round. And then it's a 10 inch balloon. And I'm just gonna wrap this into the base and stick on top. Because with this design, I'm gonna do something I normally don't do. Something I'm normally a little bit allergic from. And it's using glue in my latex designs. If you know me, you know I hate glue. But I'm also about trying new things and giving things a chance. Um, because if I don't like it or don't do it, it doesn't mean it's wrong to do it. If it works, it works. So this design has mainly uh, glue. I used Uglu uh, dashes uh, in this design. I will demonstrate this. Simple reason, it has a more clean look. This is the way, uh, the reason I chose to use glue in this design. So. Just so you know, I'm cheating a little bit, or in my eyes it's cheating, of course it's not really cheating. Attach my body onto the base, and then I'm going to connect the head. Also a 12 inch coffee, and it's inflated, let's see, it's 7.5, 8 inch, something like this. So it really depends, do you like a bigger head for your teddy bear, or a smaller, because you use, uh, you're creating a kind of teddy bear like a, a plush animal or a cartoon like animal don't make the head too small because the bigger the head the cuter it's going to be so I would choose 8 inch over 7 inch for example and it needs to balance in with the entire design how do I size this? I really do it by the eye so I just use my hand pump or my, your inflating machine and you inflate it and you hold it above your design and you decide whether you like it or not very simple, no crazy calculations or anything. I'm going to connect this, tie them together, and we have the body and the head. Later, we're going to stable uh, stabilize everything with the neck and uh, connecting the arms. But first, I'm going to the legs, <coughs> because as you maybe see right here, it has the distortion technique. Um, I already created two legs for this design and I will demonstrate how I created this with a clear balloon so you can actually see what I'm doing inside of the 12 inch because this is a 12 inch and inside of the 12 inch is a 260 and a 360 and that's the way to create the leg shape here um, and as I said I'm going to demonstrate it to you with a clear balloon so you can actually see what I'm doing. I think it's still a little bit far away, but I'm going to demonstrate it up close on the table, so don't worry about that. Only thing I'm worrying about, let's hope now it works in one time. You always see where you demonstrate things in up close. And again, any comments? If there are any comments, Kun, please let me know. Uh, so far, no, everything is, everyone is quiet, so um, I think it's uh, all clear so far. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So here you see the shape that I created for the little leg. I have a clean finish at the top and I hide the, where I cut away the nozzle and this will be stick to the side of the teddy bear. It's a pretty fun shape and what I noticed is when you create elements like this into your designs, um, the value increases a lot because for people this is magic. How can a balloon be shaped like something like this? Um, of course, distortion takes a little bit more time, but actually it's just a practice. 
practice distortion, you get faster with it, and then uh, your designs can be made quick and they can be uh, sold easily and profitable. So it's all about practicing. So what I'm going to use, of course, I'm going to demonstrate with completely different colors. It's just so you can uh, see how it's done. A 12-inch balloon. And first I will start with the bottom of the little uh, feet. And for that I'm going to use it to 60. And uh, what I like to do is I really love an electric inflator when doing... Um, distortion techniques. Simple reason, if I use a hand pump, you have a break. Every time you pump, there's a little break. If I use an electric machine, there's a flow of air going through and it's just easier uh, for me to create a distortion technique. Also, I can set a timer because now I have two legs. I want them to be the same size and i much uh, more accurate with an electric inflating machine because I can set the time. So with this demonstration, I use the premium Smart Twist, and I set it to 0 0.5. Always check for your designs if you like a bigger or smaller size, or does it inflate the same as my machine. So always double check with your own inflator. For, my, for me at this moment, I have 0 0.5 on the premium Smart Twist. The 260, I, it's going to be a small, small circle, so I don't need a lot because what's important is that the nozzles will line up. I will insert this into the 12 inch and as I said they need to line up. This is very important because if the 260 is sticking out like this, the, this part will start inflating outside of the 12 inch and you will not get the air inside. So make sure the nozzles line up. First I inflate my 12 inch so the 260 actually has space and then I'm going to inflate the 260 inside, touch the nozzle and inflate it. Now I'm going to pull the ends towards the nozzle of the 260 so it's a circle and there's no spacing in between. So I have a clear clean circle and there's not a lot of space in between the two ends of the 260s. And then I'm going to tie them together. The 12 inch will deflate, but that's no problem. That's exactly what I want. I cut off the ends of my 260. Make sure you create a double knot. Uh, you cut them off uh, close to the, uh, to the knot of the 260. And make sure for the double knot, because otherwise when you cut away the nozzles of the 260, you have a chance it will deflate. I again deflate my 12 inch, hold it upside down and then deflate it. So my 260 loop that I created on the inside is at the very bottom and it's flat. Also I push the air, as you can see, to the end of the, the 12 inch so there is a lot of air at the top. And we have a clear like here and I want the feet to be in the middle you can still shape this a little bit after um, you insert the 360 important is, is that the nozzle is in the middle of the 260 of the circle of the 260 is it on top of the round circle inflate it again and make sure it's in the middle so just you start over like this. As you can see now, there is a lot of space. I'm going to insert the 360 and inflate it so I can create a little leg shape. For this, I don't want the entire 360. That's way too much for the length of the balloon. And I will get my little balloon stick because I've got it to bring it to the table. Ta -da. And this will be my tool to insert the 360 into the 12 inch. If you're pretty new to distortion, my advice will always be practice with, clear, with a clear balloon, a clear 12 inch, because then you see what you're actually doing inside of the balloon, and it's going to be way more easier. You're going to understand what's happening. And that's very important. You have to know what's going on um, and then it's going to be much easier. In this case 
I'm not going to inflate the 12 inch first, so I'm going to inflate the 360 directly. For me, it was more easier to do it this way uh, than with the electric inflator. You can see the shape is a little off, but you can easily change this. So I can still play around with the design on the inside. Now I'm going to tie everything off. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie the 360 and not the 12 inch. Because what will happen, and you can change the shape here. What will happen is the 260 and the 360 will lose some air, as balloons do. And if I close that 12 inch, it will inflate because of the air in the 360 and 260 uh, coming out. So I never close my uh, 12 inch. I can cut away the nozzle. I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter, like so. Don't do it too short because then it will uh, pull all around and you will lose your balloon. You don't want this, so don't cut it too. I think this is even a little too risky already. Let's see. Like now I'm more safe. There's more and more uh, latex at the top. And it's less likely for the balloon to rip apart. Another little trick that some people do. Um, let me try. I'm not a big fan of this uh, technique because I don't like cutting holes in my balloons. But something uh, people do to keep the shape, the distortion shape, is cut a little hole in the latex. So an eeny tiny hole. It's not there yet. If you do this, make sure you have a sharp scissor. Now it's there. And through this little hole, air can escape, and your distortion shape is better and will stay longer. But keep in mind, there is a little hole. If you make it too big, your whole design will rip apart. I don't prefer this re simple reason is it's going to your customer. You don't know what, what they will do with it. And you don't want that leg to explode. So this is how I create the little leg, 260 loop, make it flat at the bottom of the 12 inch and then inflate your uh, 360 and you can still shape and put everything in place. That's how I create the little feet. Yes? I have two of them. So I created this, did exactly the same thing with brown balloons uh, to create the legs and they will be attached at the bottom right here. I'm going to do all the taping at the very end to sample everything together. So my little element, the little legs. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please, please feel free to ask them into the comments. Um, let's create the neck. So the head is uh, stable on top of the body. Uh, let's put this to zero. <coughs> Inflate a 260. We're just going to need a little part. We're going to make like a loop around here. Um, should I also do it on the table, you think? It's very simple to pinch, uh, two pinch twists. Let me double check. Yeah. Well, the problem is you have black, and it, with black it doesn't show on camera. So that I should much. wear different colors. Uh, a more bright color would be better. Yes. Next time, okay. I throw everything on the floor. Let me just demonstrate it on top of the white table. Then. Yes. So I have the body and the head, and now I will create a loop that will make sure the head stays stabilized on the body, and is. Uh, at the same time a connection point for the arm. I'm going to start with two pinch twists, like so. And don't make this too big. If you make your loop, for example, like this, it's way too big. It's not in proportion with your design. We need to keep this nice and cute. You can also shape your balloon a little bit on beforehand like so. So as you can see, it is a small bubble. What? What? 
What do you want to say, Tim? Uh, <laughs> it's your translation of the Dutch words into English. On beforehand. On beforehand. On forehand. That's not an English word. I think it is. No. On beforehand. No? <laughs> no. Oh. But it's cute. Hey. <laughs> Stop joking. Also this one. Or oh, from now on it is. Yeah? Hey, make that cat wise. I did the same, sorry, I, I, I stopped explaining because Quinn is teasing me again. So I, I guess the being nice to each other ends here in 2023. <laughs> we kept it going for five days. So two pinch twists on one side, a bubble, it's about four finger bubble, two pinch twists and again a four finger bubble. Very important step, wrap it around the knots and then connect it together otherwise it's pretty difficult to get the head through you do that on beforehand that's an english word it is i'm gonna google this <laughs> you do it on beforehand <laughs> i'm gonna google it even sabina says maybe it's not a word but i got it <laughs> on beforehand. but i always use it it's a dutch word <laughs> I always use this. Cut away the ends. Twisting parts like this I will do first. Not on beforehand because apparently that's not a word. <laughs> I do it first. Hi Gilles, a uh, happy new year to you, uh, even in France. <laughs> Hello Gilles. Um, I do this first. And then I do all the taping because I don't want to move in and throw it around uh, when I taped everything. So this is the little neck part. You know what? I'm going to add the little arms to it right now. It's more easy. Easier. Bon anniversaire en français. Bon anniversaire and to you uh, too. Elma says uh, you have to talk to uh, Louis van Gaal. It's a Dutch, uh, Dutch hey. coach. He also speaks uh, on beforehand. I, th I think I even used it in, in writings and everything. I've been using it so long. <laughs> and again, I forget to explain what I'm doing. So, I cut the ends of the 360 because I, own, I want to have a clean finish. I don't want any nuts. Of course, you don't have to do this. You can also use one uh, 360, but on one of the arms, you will have the little nut, of course, of cl from closing the balloon. Inflate this to a size that you think is nice. Is less, like I said before, everything needs to be in proportion. I think this is a nice size. I cut it, make it tight, not because I don't want this to lose shape. Sorry, I'm really not seeing what I'm doing. Hope Kuhn was giving me a little bit of guidance here shape the arm because it's always nicer to have a little bend than have a straight arm so like now it's going to be shaped next to the body on beforehand i'm gonna google this <laughs> Two of the same, so first I make sure I have two of the same sizes and then I connect them to my, the connection points that I created earlier. Okay, I really don't want to read this comment from Sabina, but um, maybe I'll just skip it. You don't need to know. Sabina says Sabina Googled it and beforehand is a word. You see? <laughs> On beforehand. I use it all the time. Girl power. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Scared everybody now. <laughs> ha! You see? 
You're making me feel really bad. I was really thinking like, oh my God, I used it so much in my life. So now we have a little... Uh, Maybe it's a tennis term, but it's not a common word. It's like backhand and forehand. No, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention, switch back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry, hit the mic. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was doing really great in this uh, class. I, this I was thinking, but Kuhn really got me off. And I forgot to explain a lot of things. Um, so we have the little uh, head, the arms. And the body, I just wanted to do a serious lie for one spoon. So we have the first part ready. And as I always say uh, to you guys, if you look at the design, what else could it be? Uh, okay, maybe it's a little bit past uh, Christmas, but it could be a nice gingerbread man or the base of a gingerbread man. Um, so when you're working on designs and you want to get more creative and challenge yourself, when you're halfway through, just look at your design and think, what else could it be? So that's for you guys. Um, if you know something, if you look at this little uh, cute shape, finding the right spot because it's all dark and dark, if you see the shape, what else could it be? Write it in the comments, let us know. And I hope Kun pays attention so he can actually tell me what you come up with. The second I'm going to make is a little ear. And of course, I'm also going to demonstrate it on top of the camera. It's a very simple, basic design. So most of the uh, elements in this design are not very complicated. I think the most complicated part are the little distortion legs. But for the rest, it's creating all the elements and then throw them in together with some glue and you have a nice, cute teddy bear. So let me show you guys the uh, ears and I'm uh, also going to show you the little nose at the same time. It's more easy. So we're going to create this element. For that, I'm going to use a 260 coffee and a 260 white sand. Get my little inflator. Um, one part there is the white sand, and on the back, of course, is brown. So I'm going to start by inflating both of the balloons. I use a little bit of the white sand, and a little bit more of the coffee, and tie them together. Now we could just make a double knot and get rid of the ends, like so. And I'm going to create two bubbles. It's just it's two, two, three finger bubble. Not too big. Again, everything needs to be in proportion. You don't want your little cute teddy bear have two big ears. And then I'm going to wrap the brown, the coffee, 260 around the twisted part. Everything is the same size. Wrap it in tight. Now I'm going to get rid of the ends uh, one by one. And what I will do is I wrap around the 260. And make a tight knot, and we're going to cut off the ends. This surface is nice and flat, and it's easy to stick on the uh, ears. As you can see, they stand up by themselves, so that's perfect, nice surface to stick them onto the head. So these are the cute little two ears. And then I will create my nose, not my nose, but the teddy bear's nose. I lost my five inch black. Oh, it's here. And for this, we're going to use a um, five inch black and a five inch um, white sand. First, start with the nose part and just inflate it very, very tiny. You could also use the end of a 360 or 260, is a little bit too small, I guess but you can stretch the air all the way to the end of the five inch and make a very tight knot. Like so. Cute little nose. Inflation. We, uh, we have a question. Yes. Uh, Elma asked, uh, why don't you put a raisin uh, twist uh, on, the, on the top of the head? 
for the ears. Uh, you could, but then you always have your nuts you, visible, so you need something. Um, it's the same when I tie the head to the body, it's always a little bit wobbly. And uh, so if you use raisin twists, you're tying them together, and it never sticks as tight on top of there uh, than when you tape it. Um, so if you use a raisin twist, you have to tie them together, and you probably need something extra to support the ear so it will stay up straight. And I think I see you have five connection points on the head for two ears, two eyes, and a nose. If you put five raisins in one balloon, maybe it's a little bit much. Well, it's possible because it's uh, Hola, not Guatemala. inflated very much, but... Hmm? I somebody from Guatemala. I ah. have to say hi. <laughs> Um, well, you can try it, of course. For this design, I chose not to, um, but you will always feel free to, to try new things. Um, I inflated my 5-inch. Uh, first, I inflated a lot, then I deflate it slowly uh, while I push it until my fingers can touch each other through the balloon, and I know I can make my raisin twist. Push the air all the way to the end. You make a loose knot, that's very important, and I tie my... 5 inch to there. These can go, double nut. And now I'm going to push the nut into the 5 inch and I grab it here on the other side. At the middle, the center part of the 5 inch has the most latex, is the strongest. Like so. When you have difficulties uh, at this part when making a the raisin, uh, raisin twist, tulip twist. Just keep in mind, push, I push away the balloon and then I twist. So push and twist and push and twist and push and twist and push and twist. Makes it much more easier because when I push away this balloon, there is space for my hand to turn. When it's in there and I want to turn, there's less space. So that's some that little trick that made it easier for me. I always keep my little basket with scraps, which I got from Melissa Vincent. Thank you again so much. I love it my little scraps and I use one of these scraps to tie to secure that tulip. And also these can go the ends. You can play a little bit about the where to place the nose. It's very cute if it's not in the center, but a little bit up, like this. So you can play with this part. Now we have a nose and two ears. As you can already see, if I place it like this, you already see a little cute teddy bear. Mm. Yes. And I'm back. Da -da -da. So we have the elements, uh, the only thing we will need uh, is the eyes. For this I make a um, uh, pinch twist, two pinch twists with a uh, 260 black. And I'm not going to demonstrate this up close because you really know how to make, you really should know how to make a pinch. I make a pinch twist and I immediately tie it off. And I repeat it. Now the important part is to make them the same size. Double check. That looks about right. And make a double knot. Always a double knot if you're going to cut off the ends. So you're sure it's going to stay. So, so I have two, you're not seeing this, but I have two little pinch twists that I'm going to use as the eyes. Now is the moment of truth and I'm going to stick everything together to create this cute little beer. I have my ooglu dots or ooglu dashes and I'm going to use this to stick everything together. So first I'm going to place them, I want this on this side, where you want them. So you make sure you glue, stick your piece of glue on the right part of the balloon. 
and this comes here and with the legs I just make sure they line up so that's the most important part for me make sure the legs line up also when I stick them I only attach them to the body but I make them rest on top of that 5 inch cluster if you want an extra security spot you can also tape them um, once more on that um, 5 inch but for me this is fine and this worked uh, perfect for me so the little legs are taped to the body and then I will add my ears not my ears but the teddy bear's ears First, see where I want the ears to be, a little bit more to the side. Get your little piece of tape. And stick it. Perfect. So this part, a little bit of tape. And it's just assembling everything together. Never ever in my career did I think I would create a sculpture this way. So I have the little ears on top, as you can see. Oh. And really, when you put everything together, it starts to become a cute little beer. So now for the nose. Tape. Always make sure your tape is uh, nice and warm. Uh, at this moment it's a little bit cold here and I notice that the tape has more troubles sticking. Um, I need two or more pieces of tape for the nose because otherwise it will be loose and will become floppy. Is floppy a word, Gorn, or do you, don't you agree with floppy either? <laughs> yes, floppy is a word, but it's a piece of hardware for a computer. It's a floppy disk. Yeah, floppy disk, I say floppy. So I attached two gluing points to the side of the nose and I stick it on there. And then on top of that nose I will add my little pinches for the eyes. And that's it for the teddy bear. Here. It's a really cute and it's a pretty simple and fast design. Of course, every design needs some practice. Practice makes perfect, makes you faster, makes you better in what you do. And time is money, as we say, so if you can work faster, you will have more profit. Like so, and we have our own cute little teddy bear. And for the teddy bear, as it is right now, it's finished. This could work perfect on, uh, now it's on a centerpiece. Um, this could be for a baby shower or something in, in this uh, area. Um, for now, it is for um, Valentine's Day. So we're going to give him a little rose. And I'm going to show you how to create it. It's a very simple a uh, quick rose uh, and I just give it to the teddy bear. It's a little extra detail that makes it extra cute and extra lovable. Of course you can also give him a little heart, a foil heart maybe with a name on it so you can go as crazy as you want with this uh, design. We go to the table for a close up. For this I'm going to use a 260 reflex red and a 260 reflex green. Now we don't want to make this rose too big. I'm going to start with three pinch twists. And also for the pinch twists, don't make them too big because we need a nice cute rose that fits with the size of your cute little teddy bear. Just keep in mind, try to keep your decorations in proportions. So three pinch twists, then I make the bubble. This decides what the length of your rose is going to be. I use a four finger bubble. And then again, I will add three pinch twists.
I make a second four finger bubble, twist it into those pinch twists, and then a third four finger bubble. Again, twist it into those pinch twists. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze into the balloon so it's a little bit more softer. I'm going to wrap around the 260, wrap it around those pinch twists, and wrap it around tight. As you can see, it really has the shape of the little pinch, and then I will go around and then go down keep that pressure on the balloon and wrap it around the three pinch twist at the bottom and that's it put it tight get rid of the rest make a secure knot so it won't deflate and as you can see it's cute little rose Use the 260 green for the stem. Attach it to the bottom. And I'm going to keep this very minimalistic. So just the stem, no leaves or anything. Like so. Get rid of the end. And you have a cute, like so, rose. Oh! And then for the finishing touch, I will attach the rose um, to the little beer. Let him hold it. I will uh, tape this also on two points at his little arm and his body, so it's a nice and tight and will be more secured. So again, I'm going to tape this. Really, I'm just as shocked as you that I use so many tape in a latex design. But sometimes it just works and it's nice to, to get out of your comfort zone and try something completely different from what you normally do. Uh, that's what I did with this design. Way out of my comfort zone. Keep it in the position I like. I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. What's happening to me? And here at the bottom of the stem. I do have to interrupt because it's not even four o'clock and somebody's talking about bear. About bear? Bear to sa says, the bear is almost ready, so get me some bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it? the word that it's... Beer. <laughs> no, I wanted, didn't want to say that. It's not four o'clock. Is it not beer o'clock? It's not beer o'clock yet. It's always beer o'clock <laughs> somewhere in the world. Uh, that's true. So, that's the end of this design. It's a cute little teddy bear. And it's all glued together. Like a maniac. So sometimes it works. Um, this is design. Again, if you have any questions, now is the moment to ask them into the live chat. And this design will be uploaded to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So you can watch it as many times as you want to. Um, Thank you for watching. I will say our agenda because we have what a lot. What will you say? We have a lot of workshops coming up. Oh yes, up. we do yes. have a lot of workshops. We are planning um, in time this, these, these days. Um, what we have. You're planning on beforehand. Yes, I'm planning on beforehand. It's a really <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm going to Google it. Um, yes, I did actually plan on beforehand. Yes, it's a lot. good that you plan on beforehand. I'm gonna be really the moment this life ends, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, I lost it. Um, we have our first group workshop uh, of this year. It's gonna be also this month, the 15th of January. I'm going to teach that class, um, and it's gonna be about balloon walls and balloon backdrops. And what I'm going to teach you is um, different styles, different techniques. So you have the duplet square pack, alternate square pack, link loon, cross weave. You have all kinds of different uh, ways to create a balloon wall. And every way has its pro and its con. And I'm going to uh, 
uh, talk about this, I'm going to demonstrate it, and I'm going to teach you how to use this technique and which technique for uh, which occasion, and how to example design your walls, so how to add logos, numbers, etc. Um, um, we have a little question. Uh, are those the no, uh, glue dots? Up. Glue dots, uh, no, those are ooglu dashes, because glue dots themselves, um, I only use them for very simple attachments, uh, but not for sticking a design together like this. Oh, look, it's like a big brother and a baby brother. Oh. Um, but the, 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 the glue dots don't work that well holding something like this together, in my opinion, of course. You feel free to try. But I use the ooglu dashes. You could also use a balloon bond. But um, I'm a bigger fan, since we have them, I'm a big fan of the ooglu dashes. They work so good. So, ooglu dashes. Well, you can make some advertisement, you can buy them in the web shop. Oh, you can buy them on the web shop. <laughs> um, the agenda. 15th of January, Bloom Walls and Backdrops by me. Um, of course, you can join this class live at Semtrex Europe and online via Zoom, and you can watch it for another seven days after the workshop. Then we have the 9th of February, it's International Pizza Day, and we are going to open our Semtrex Europe Pizzeria, and you're welcome to join I'm our Semtrex Europe. And this is actually a class that Kun and I are going to do together. Oh, what, 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 what? Yes, surprise! No, I, I didn't know. What? Um, so that's the 9th of February, it's going to be a lot of fun, International Pizza Day, and we're going to celebrate it here at Sempatex Europe. And of course, uh, we have a fun, and maybe two, depending on how I'm feeling the day. But please, don't we do all the workshops together, I'm always here. You be always, you do nothing. And this time you're going to actually do something. So, celebrate International Pizza Day. <laughs> Kun, come on! <laughs> International Pizza Day with I, us, I 9th that. of February. So, now you see, I did something. Um, then in February, 12th of February, in Sunday, we have Peter Kramer coming all the way from Switzerland to Semprotex Europe to teach, teach a class about balloon twisting. Um, Peter Kramer, for the ones uh, who don't know him yet, shame on you, you should. Um, he's an amazing twister, uh, and he has a big business in Switzerland and amazing classes and techniques. Uh, I think the class is pretty suitable for every kind of level because you always learn something and you get a lot of inspiration. And this man, uh, he sent me the list of what he's going to do this class and it was a lot. So, get inspired and learn from Peter Kramer the 12th of February, Blue Twisting with Peter Kramer. Again, join live at Sempertex Europe, especially for a twisting class. I would recommend that. Um, because See it up close. Yes, and there will be hands-on, of course, so um, it's, uh, it's the best way to learn. But you can also join via Zoom. And we have much more. I'm not going to say everything because you will not remember, but we have our agenda on our website. And, of course, you see all our events on our Facebook page under events. And I think that's about it. That was pretty quick. Thank you again so much for joining us this live webinar. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did, too. And I'm going to um, Google now on beforehand, and I will let you know in the comments if it actually was grammar, grammar. Grammatically correct. Yeah, thank you, Kun. Grammatically correct or not. Um, thank you again. Make this little cute beer and post it and tag us and tag me because I really love to see your creations. For now, I want to thank you for watching and wish you a very, very pleasant day and weekend and week and month and year and we'll see us next time. <laughs>